Hello and welcome to the 60th video in this series programming a Chess Engine GUI in JavaScript. So last video we had in the pieces on square remove GUI piece and add GUI piece and in this video we're going to write the function that actually moves the GUI piece on the board and the good news is it's very similar to our make move function a tiny bit, little bit less involved but a little bit more code than the add and remove GUI piece. So the first thing I want to do is, and there'll be a little bit of copy and paste in here just to keep things moving along, because this is basically code you've seen before. We get our from and our two squares. And the first thing we want to do is we want to say that if our move is an ampersand capture, uh, m flag, is it m flag ep? Yes, I think it is m flag ep. If it's an ampersand capture, then we need to remove the piece, the pawn that we've captured from the board. So we'll make a little var here called ep remove, and we'll say now that if gameboard dot side gameboard dot side is equal to colors dot uh, I'll say black, and this is going to be slightly confusing now here, um, but I'll explain why. We're going to say ep remove, and we're going to remove the pawn if the side is black at two minus ten. Now if you think about it, when white captures, it captures up the board, so in a plus, uh, well, plus 9 or 11 direction, so you would remove the pawn behind it at minus 10, but we're actually going to call this move GUI piece function after we've made the move internally, we're going to put it below the print board here, so the side will actually have been changed already, so you have to be a little bit careful there and do it that way. I could of course have... Um, done the make move afterwards but hey ho I did it this way otherwise we'll do ep remove equals 2 plus 10 like this so the only thing that's remaining now is to just call our uh, remove GUI piece function I think it's with a capital and we're removing our piece from ep remove like so Okay, so that's the first thing done. What we can say though is if it wasn't an ampersand capture move, it might have been a normal capture move. So if captured move, so if that's non zero, then we've captured something. So we'll also remove a GUI piece, except this time we'll be removing on the two square. Okay, so that's the first part of the move GUI piece because we need to remember to remove our capture piece off before we then move our piece that we're moving to the two square otherwise we'll end up removing the one piece, wrong piece. So now we can look at actually removing the or moving our piece and I'm going to take some again some code that I've already got before which was here and the way we're going to go through actually doing this and I need to get the file from and the rank, oh no, I need the file 2, sorry, and the rank 2. What we're going to do is, you're, each piece that we've added, you remember in the add piece here, we add in the class of piece, it gets a class of rank 1 to rank 8, and a, a class of file 1 to file 8. So what we're going to do is we're going to get those classes on the 2 square, then what we're going to do is use jQuery to f find which our, our piece that's on the from square, use the remove class function in jQuery to remove all its classes and then use the jQuery add class function to add in its new file and rank classes. So we simply need a function which loops through every piece and we've got one here or a bit of code sorry not function code that loops through every piece Freud and slip because it probably should be in its own function and then if we found the right one which is on the from square like this then we're just going to remove all of the classes from that and then what we're going to do is we're going to say this and add class and now we can actually uh, add in the classes to this piece and do I already have something? No, I'll do it this way. Okay. I'm trying to be lazy. So we'll add in then the piece class and then we've got the rank name and then we've got the file name like so. So that then adds the class in for the piece, and that'll then cause because it's being added in, then obviously the piece to oops, the piece to move to its new destination. So last but not least is just the dealing with the castling and promotions. So we can say that if the move bitwise and with m flag castle is non-zero, then we have a castling move, and obviously we can detect each individual castling move by the destination square. 
from the uh, from the king. So we can say that if the king has moved, and I'm just going to copy this squares here to uh, g1, then we know that the rook has to go from h1 to f1. So we can say remove gui piece, and we can say squares dot h1. So we take the rook off f1, and then we'll add gui piece and we'll add it onto squares.f1 and we're adding obviously a pieces.white rook. And the good news is this is fairly repetitive code so I can just copy and paste this line now three times below like so and now be a little bit careful we're moving from a1 to d1 with a white rook then we're moving from h8 to f8 with a black rook and a black rook is moving to d8 from a8 in the case of black castling. Otherwise we can say else if and we can say promoted move is non-zero then all we need to do is we need to re remove our pawn that's now sitting on the promotion square so we'll remove it on the two and then we need to just screw add GUI piece uh, piece on the two square and we add just our promoted piece from our move as well like so and that's all there should be to it apart from maybe masses of typos inside here so I'm just going to take the move GUI piece and now drop it below the print board here inside our make user move like so Okay, now let's move over to the browser and refresh and see if it actually complains. It doesn't complain. I'm just going to try and make E2, E4. And you can see the move is being made. That's good. So I'm just going to make uh, a move to advance the pawn here. Now see if the en passant capture works. So now I can capture en passant to F6. So I'll just do that. And indeed, it's worked. Now let's capture this pawn. And it's worked. Let's test castling. So... Do something like this. I'll test the queen side castling for black. So we go here. Castling also seems to be working. Um, I'm just making nothing moves here to quickly be able to test the castling and things like this. Good. We're ready to queen side castle now for black. And queen side castling, however, didn't work. What did I do wrong there? Let's go back into here. Whoops. <laughs> if the square 2 is g1 or the square 2 is that was really bad c1 or g8 and c8 good I'm just going to save and I'm just going to refresh that and I'm sorry if this is terribly boring but I'm going to get as quickly as possible now to the state where black can castle at least queenside just to double uh, just to double check and here we are next move Okay, Black Castle's queenside okay. The only other thing to check then is a promotion, which I'll do now. Uh, how can I best test the promotion? Like this. Like this. Let's move a knight here and just one more. And a queen is produced there. Good, so things seem to be looking to be working in reasonable order. We can now actually make things work and run on the uh, moves be detected and work on the board okay and you good it detects moves of the wrong piece type as well excellent so that's it then for this video we've made quite a big step with actually being able to move the GUI piece on the board the next thing to implement will be a function which actually checks the whether the game is over or not so thanks very much for watching comments questions criticisms welcome as always on YouTube